everybody, Nick here, and I got a review for you today of a very interesting light, and that's this guy here, which is actually a grail for a lot of uh, high-end flashlight geeks, and that's the HDS Systems EDC Executive. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm really excited. Well, I was really excited to check this out. I have since checked it out. And, uh, yeah, so let's do a quick size comparison. Um, this is a CR123 light, which means it takes a battery roughly of this size. In fact, if you open the thing up, boom, this is a CR123. Um, you can actually get tubes for the uh, 18650 battery size, but uh, this one's configured for CR123. Um, and to give you a size comparison, this is an 18650 battery. Uh, this is, uh, there that went, this is an EGTAC D25A flashlight. Uh, this is a Sunway Man Thunder Hammer, which is another 18650 flashlight. This is your Zebra Light SC62. Another 18650 light, and for tradition, this is your Spyderco Delica. So, um, I want to thank my buddy Jim, first and foremost, for sending this along. It's one hell of a light, and I never would have gotten a chance to see it without him. So, uh, Jim, thank you again for all these uh, flashlights you uh, lended me. And let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the bad, and the ugly of this particular flashlight. So, good. First and foremost, this is really well built. This light is bomb-proof. Um, it's very seldom that I feel like uh, a flashlight or any, frankly, piece of uh, powered gear feels really hardcore in the pocket and in the hand, but this one really does. I do not genuinely feel like I can hurt this in any way. It's waterproof to 66 feet, which, sure, okay. All the electronics are potted, and it's just built really well. It's substantial feeling, and it's constructed. I mean, the knurling on it is really nice. The threading is just very, very nicely done. The switch is beautifully clicky, um, and the, the lens is coated. I mean, the whole thing is just built really nicely. As a manufactured object, this is well done. And so I appreciate that very much. Um, it's great. It's just built in a really great way. Um, Another good thing about this is that it fits really nicely in the hand, um, particularly with this barrel pinch here, makes it very hard for this to slip out of your hand. Compared to some other lights um, where it's much easier to pull it out, with this little pinch in the barrel here that holds your battery, it's, it's pretty secure in there. So that's kind of a nice thing. The ergonomics are good. It's still a two-hand operate light unless you're holding it in this manner, uh, but nonetheless, it's a really nice light. And you can also do, oh there, you can also do this thing where you've got it in between your fingers while you're holding something else. So that's a handy little uh, tip there. The uh, clip is very secure. It's actually threaded in so you, uh, you really can't have it just fly off and it's a nice clip. I, I like it. It's not too heavy but it's plenty beefy. I, I do like the clip. The light is plenty bright for most uses. Um, it's 250 lumens on high so it's a little bit too bright on the indoors and it's just fine outdoors. It's not great. It's not, you know, the incredible outdoor searchlight, but it's just fine outdoors. I would have no problem walking home with this guy late at night. Not, not an issue, not even a contest. Um, good. Um, the battery life on it is actually very, very good for a CR123 based light. Um, and I'm sorry, it's uh, 250 lumens on high is the, uh, the, the light output and then nine lumens on your low. Uh, so there you go. Battery life is really good. On high, at 250 lumens, you get about two hours, and uh, you get about 30 hours on low, which is a lot of runtime. And uh, low is, well, it's pretty low, but it still does the trick. And then on moonlight mode, you get five whole days, which, you know, okay, I don't see myself needing five days of moonlight. If nothing else, the sun's probably going to come out, but hey, whatever. It's a nice thing. Um, it's very easy to lock out. They've done it in such a way that if you just unscrew it partially, the... Uh, there's a disconnect there, so uh, you're not accidentally going to drain it in your backpack if you'd like. And it is massively programmable. This is, you know, and I'm going to get here in a little bit there, but it's really impressive the amount of customization you can do. There are 24 brightness levels on this guy, um, and they are spaced visually, so each of them looks like an actual change. Um, because our, li our eyes do not preserve, perceive light in a linear way. As you add to the lumens... It doesn't mean as much, you know, as you grow up. It's longer. So they've done it really nicely. So each time you go up a level, it looks like you went up an actual level. Looks pretty evenly spaced. And you can set any of the 24 brightness levels to any of the settings. So there's one setting when you turn it on. There's a setting when you turn it on and then hold. That goes brighter. There's a double-click 
a triple click setting. I, you can do, you can really, really customize the heck out of this and make it whatever you'd like it to be. So there's your good. It's bomb proof. Um, you can really just do anything to this light and I feel like it's going to be fine. The feel is substantial. The construction's great. Fits good in the hand. It's plenty bright for any kind of an EDC use. Really good battery life for a 123 light. Easy lockout. Massively, massively, massively programmable. And you can also get in a lot of tints. Um, this guy is in a high-end, high CRI sort of bulb. Uh, well, bulb, LED. And uh, you can tell, product of a prior generation here, I guess. Um, but anyways, uh, and so the color rendering is great, but you can get it in all kinds of other custom options. This is a really customizable sort of light. So there's you good. Uh, let's go on into your bad. A couple of bad things. First off, the interface is just okay. Um, and it's entirely click-based. So if you do a single click, that puts you on low. If you click and then hold, it puts you on the high. If you double click, once the light is on, you go to medium. And if you triple click, you go to a moonlight mode. So you can see it's on, but just barely. Um, and it's a little weird because you don't double click it when you turn on to get the um, medium. You have to click it once and then double click to get the medium. Or if you want moonlight, you need to click it once to get the low and then triple click again. You can customize all of this, but at the same time, I'm just not a huge fan of that. There's a lot of memorization to it. And, you know, I've been reviewing a lot of lights lately, so I don't have time to memorize any one of them. But that's not the best interface in the world. I'm not a big fan of the uh, tactical crenellated strike bezel, nor frankly, just the whole thing's a little bit on the tactical side, especially for something referred to as the EDC executive. Um, this is not a terribly executive -y light. I can see the uh, the EGTAC and titanium here being a little bit more executive -y. This is much more of, I don't know, it just comes across as a hard use tool rather than something fancy, so the name leaves me cold. The clip is not reversible, which means uh, you can't really clip it to the brim of your hat to be a, uh, a headlamp, and it is 250 bucks, and that's a lot of money, but it's not ugly because the quality is up there. Um, you know, the construction is really good. I can actually see that somebody, especially with the high CRI here, put 250 bucks worth of effort into this, and so I'm not gonna call that ugly, but it's pretty damned expensive. Uh, this is a really expensive flashlight compared to, you know, some of your, your zebra lights are like 75, 80 bucks or even 100 and 150. This is way up there. So that's your bad. The interface is okay. This tactical strike bezel here, as well as the tactical styling, leaves me a little on the cold side. The clip isn't reversible and it's a lot of damn money at 250 bucks. Um, let's talk about the ugly. Okay, couple of ugly things here. First and foremost, this is huge. This is the biggest single CR123 light I've handled. I, remember, this is the battery that this light takes. That's a big difference. And there are other single CR123 lights. This is the Olight S1, much, much, much smaller. And so, you know, you're getting more brightness, you're getting better battery life, and you're getting ultimate durability, but still, it's huge. This is about 1.6 ounces, this is about 3.6 ounces. That's a huge gain. This is not a lightweight sort of affair. And that just makes it kind of a pain in the neck to put in the pocket. It's also very thick compared to your Olight, or certainly compared to your uh, AA lights, like your uh, D25A here. So, wow, absolutely blown away by the size of this thing. Um, and, you know, so it, it's a great light, but you're paying a lot in terms of size. And you're also in single CR uh, 18650 territory here. This is a Zebra light, uses this battery, so you get brighter light at the same battery life. And I don't know. So for EDC, this is a lot of light with relatively little consequence for that size. The other ugly thing is that the programming interface is really a little bit ugly. I'm not gonna go through the whole process, but just to summarize, you remove the battery, then you put the battery in, you click 20 times, you hold the button down, it gives you five flashes if it's ready to program, 10 if it's not, then you go to the setting you'd like to program, so you know, and then you know double click, okay, now I'm programming media. Then I double click, then I press, I hold, and then I release, and then I cycle through the settings, one through 24. So one, two, three, four, five. When it's at the brightness I want, I hold it down to lock it in. And then I, you know, there are other options and you need to redo this if there's a bad, holy crap. It's just complicated. And for somebody who really needs to customize every setting, if you are a mole person living under New York City and you need an excellent flashlight, uh, but you only need five degrees of moonlight mode, this is the perfect light for you. So mole people, if you're watching YouTube, this, this is what you want here. 
uh, or actual moles if they carry flashlights. I don't know. But anyways, uh, but for most of us, it's just a little much. And so you're buying a lot of programming that you're probably not going to end up using because the regular presets are just fine. And then I guess related to that is that there's just a little too much interface here. It's not, none of it's terribly intuitive. Um, I, I wouldn't have a chance in heck of, you know, remembering how to program it or even frankly remembering all the settings, unless I'd been using it for a long time, uh, without having the manual nearby. And so because of that, this is a light that's got a lot of interface, but not a lot of intuition. And I'm not a huge fan of that in general for something that should be fairly straightforward. Um, so, yeah, there's your ugly. Um, it's absolutely huge. The programming interface is just not good. And the rest of the interface is a little bit too much. Um, it doesn't really feel like a good intuitive interface like on some other lights. And I'm actually going to review its rotary brother that fixes all those problems. So keep an eye out for that. So what are my final conclusions here? Conclusions. This is a fine light. It's bomb-proof. It's long-lasting. It's bright enough for pretty much anything. And it offers you more control and customization than most CR123 lights, or frankly, most small cars. Um, but you pay a price. Uh, you pay a price in complexity of the interface. You pay a price in size, in weight. And frankly, you pay a price in price. 250 bucks is nothing small. And the interface, to me, just isn't very pleasurable. Um, you know, especially next to its rotary brother, this is just kind of a pain in the neck. To remember, oh, okay, you click, then you hold to get high, and I don't know. And so for me, this was just too much for my EDC. Every time I thought about carrying it, I was just like, oh, I don't need quite that much. It's a little too big, a little too heavy, a little too thick, a little too pricey, a little too tactical. And so it misses the gem mark. And, you know, it'd be a fine light, a less expensive price. Um, but even as well built as it is, I just doesn't reach that. So if you're jumping out of airplanes and you need a single CR123 light, this is probably a great choice. Similarly, if you are a mole person uh, and you need five levels of moonlight and customizability with long battery life, this is right here, your flashlight. But if you're just a boring person doing relatively boring things, this is really serious overkill and you're paying a big price for that, what you're getting there. Like I said, it's a great light, but it doesn't quite hit gem for me. Um, I can see why a flashlight nerd would absolutely be in love with this, but I'm not quite nerdy enough to get there. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That is your HDS Systems uh, EDC Executive. I hope that uh, you found this interesting and that this review has lit up your life. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, and congratulations. Your Christmas shopping is over for the mole people in your life. Bye now.